Hey guys, it's Matt here, and today I'm bringing you guys another episode of Matt Rants. And before we get to the topic of the day, just want to mention a few things here and there. First off, I want to thank you all so much for participating in our Halloween in July event that we have going on right now. Uh, you guys have been listening to the podcast over at Those Guys on the Radio, watching some fun stuff that we've released on our TG Productions YouTube channel, and also watching all the fun, spoopy stuff that we're releasing here on Those Guys Play. Thank you all so much. Love you all. And so happy that you've been watching all that stuff. And so happy that you guys re- reacted not not all happy reactions but uh still happy that you guys actually uh got to check out my both my atari vcs rant which i did a really big rant uh compiling all the news that we've heard over the last month with the atari vcs uh just a lot of negativity there sadly and i hate being so negative it's gonna happen again in this rant but uh but i really try to bring you guys the positive sides of the internet but sadly today we're gonna get on another negative rant sadly um but uh but it's just you know sometimes these topics come out this way and sometimes I have to get, you know, a little mad uh, occasionally, but still, um, but you know what, today's going to be a good day, other than, other than the, the, you know, the topic maybe being a little, a little negative, I think it's going to be a good day, um, but sadly, we learned of some news last week that uh, I'm talking about today that really confuses me because I never thought we would get here, and I, maybe I'm naive, maybe um, I totally should have thought that we were going to get here at some point or another, but I just don't understand what this group is doing and i don't really think they understand how badly they're screwing up right now so what are we talking about here who are we talking about here well i can't talk about the who or what program they're releasing i want to keep that pretty vague you guys can google that yourself and i'm even going to link to the article down below where i cite all of my like where i'm you know getting all of my quotes and things like that from so to be fair in the article itself i do believe they list the name of the group that i'm talking about today uh the question of course the topic of the day is should hackers be allowed to DRM their software? Now, in this case, I'm referring to the Nintendo Switch in particular. I also want to mention as well that I was going to say charge for their software, but technically they're not because there is a free version, so they're technically not charging for parts of the software. So it was a bit hard to get this down, you know, and compact into one uh, question topic, just, you know, it's for, for the video itself. But uh, still, so yeah, the question becomes, should hackers be allowed to DRM their software? So uh, this is going to be a very interesting topic because uh, and I also want to make some just creating things like emulators uh, and trying to create something brand new that doesn't involve uh, something currently already in place. So it would be like saying, um, you know, should the person who created the PS2 emulator, should they be allowed to sell their software? Well, uh, there is BIOS that is involved there that isn't completely homemade. That is a PS2's BIOS. So in theory, if they sell it without the BIOS, are they able? to that's something we have to ask ourselves and think about right because if you're creating an emulator from scratch that doesn't have anything to do with the console itself you know these emulators don't work with the super nintendo or the nes or the n64 or really any console i can name every single console out there that has an emulator too many um but the point is that they don't really work together they don't work in tandem you either play the games on the console or you pop it into a computer or you get the game online and you can play it on your emulator so those are two completely separate things this in this case if you guys don't know the story what's going on is there's a hacker group that um because i actually talked about this at a matt rant uh a while ago there is a there's a there's a way to exploit your nintendo switch console i'm not going to tell you how and that's not even because i'm trying to do the moral thing here i just don't get how any of this works but i but i did read up some stuff and in what they're doing but i don't get how the whole hacking the console works but apparently there is a hardware issue so it's not even a software related can't be patched out it's a hardware issue directly from the hardware itself that you can actually modify your switch it is a bit difficult to do it's not super duper easy one two three as far as i've heard but it can be done so uh is that a problem well if you're doing it to do homebrew stuff and play uh, homebrew games, or you're doing it to future-proof your console one day when, you know, Switch games aren't being made, 10 years from now, let's say. If that's the reason why you're doing it, all right, I'm not going to get on you for it. I'm not going to tell you not to do it. Again, you want to do it to tinker. You're just trying to have some fun, uh, wholesome fun, by the way. And I'll, I'll say the reason why I'm saying wholesome, I'll explain why a little bit later. But you're just having fun, not at anyone else's expense. You're just trying to sit there 
and get your mind working, get the gears going, get the blood pumping, and see what the Switch can do. If that's what you're trying to do, because some people have done that. Some people have actually been able to play NES, Super NES, N64 emulators, I think Genesis ones as well. Unsure about N64, but the point is that people have been doing some really cool things with them. So in that regard, I'm like, cool, you're good. Like, I'm actually happy that uh, you've been able to, you know, again, get your mind working and do some innovative things with the Nintendo Switch. Now, it becomes problematic, and the topic of the video comes into, you know, into prominence here, uh, comes to mind because of the fact that this group, which again is a hacker group, they're using the Switch itself to hack into this thing. And then they give you a quote unquote free option saying, hey, download our software for free if you want to homebrew and do interesting things with it okay however if you want to download nintendo or you know play nintendo switch games illegally on our uh using our program you're going to have to have a paid version of the program what are you doing what are what are you doing um i just I just don't get it. I mean, look, I'm not even trying to say that people should download the the game, but if people are going to download it, they're going to download it regardless. Why? I, I, it just doesn't make sense to me because like at this point, right? At this point, you can, you know, try to say anything you want to about exploration, people trying to do good things and, and, and change the game and, and all this kind of stuff, right? And, and get, you know, and know what the Switch can really do. All this cool stuff that they could, you know, talk about. And then completely circumventing all of that by saying, yeah, but we know that some of you guys might try to uh, download some games and play them on here. And if that's what you're going to do, no, you have to pay us to do it. The, it's just it's just mind blowing that someone or that a, that, that a uh, hacking group would do that because I just like, OK. Let me explain why it's so mind-blowing to me and why it's frustrating and it pisses me off, especially when I hear their response, or at least someone who considers themselves a representative from the group, giving uh, The Verge, which is where I have this article from, uh, giving them a response and how it completely, again, I just, I don't understand how they think they can do this and not get completely screwed. Like going from, oh, we're in our house to, oh, we're in the legal system now. Great, we're in jail. Um... Okay, so let me explain where I'm coming from, where my mind is. So when I think of these hacking groups, I think of fan subbers or fan translators for anime, right? So either anime or manga as well. Fan scan leaders. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. Um, when it comes to those groups, no money is exchanged. If money is exchanged, then people start to think you're scummy. Why? Because the idea of being a fan translator, doing this not just as a fan, but you're doing this for the fans because you're a fan of the product or whatever, the product being something that legally came out in Japan but or another country but might not legally be out here. So usually you have groups, the ones that are looked at and aren't considered uh, you know, scummy here and there because they're taking things that haven't come out in the USA, be it through Crunchyroll, Funimation, like on DVD through Funimation, or any other company. Uh, company and they're doing these trying to make you know bring it to the u.s for fans and not have any money exchanged even things like server costs are looked at a little bit awkwardly uh patreons are also looked at awkwardly i haven't seen any uh fan sub groups do patreons though i don't know about fan sub groups post patreon era so i really hope that they aren't using patreon because even then it's a little awkward here and there because it's not being you're not being paid directly for the translation but you're still getting some money here and there when it's just i don't know i'm not a big fan of it personally but still you have these groups here saying, hey, listen, we, you know, we're releasing this. In some cases, they put the the video file with the with the um, the subtitle file. Some cases, they put the subtitle file on the side. It would be as if, talking about an, uh, for an anime here, it would be as if an anime fan subbing group said, all right, we're going to give you the translation file here for free, or you can pay us to put the video alongside the translation file the question would become who the hell are you seriously who the hell are you you don't own the rights to this you don't own the rights to what you're doing right you're hacking the system because you're trying to essentially uh, help people either you know become fans of something overseas understand something uh see what they can do with it um you know become fans anything like that 
But the and and funnily enough, in a weird way, uh, switch hacking could cause more people to buy switches if they want to tinker with their switch. But it is just insanity to me to think, oh, if you want to pirate the system, you're gonna have to pay us for a version of the uh, of the software that means you can um what's it called that means that you can uh actually play these games and do this kind of you know have this functionality for the uh on the switch right so the reason why my my words are being lost right now you're like matt where are you going why is your mind wandering because if some of you guys are going well well, hey look then just circumvent it yourself then if you put the software on there if you hack the switch yourself then try to get around it why why won't you get around it right Here's the problem. If you try to circumvent it, then one person, uh, I want to see, want to get the name right here. I know Mike was the first name. I want to get the whole name here. There we go. Mike Heskin. Uh, he was trying to circumvent the software himself because again, that's what you think, right? Oh, okay. Well, you know, if I don't want to pay for their, you know, their pirates, uh, their hackers, I don't want to pay for their software because that's not what this is all about. It can actually brick your system because of the drm because of what they put into their hacking software if you try to circumvent that your switch can be bricked now it can be unbricked if you know what you're doing which you have to get really in depth to places so i'm going to read what uh mr heskin actually said himself uh, i want to make sure that i get his quote directly here uh he said that Regular users won't be able to restore the NAND normally. You need to mess with raw MMC commands to either unlock or force erase the EMMC. So what does that mean? I do not have any idea. And maybe you don't either. If you do, uh, comment below. I have no idea what that means, which means that I probably would not be one of the people uh, who would end up getting into this sort of situation. I mean, apparently, according to uh hesker he says that the co- or heskin rather the code can indeed trigger with normal usage but the odds are so low that it is very unlikely that anyone will be affected by this uh quote unquote unless you're messing with voltage or time sensitive stuff uh heskin tweeted this himself and he said that these were direct observations from reverse engineering and testing their code so essentially uh even though it says low the percentage is still there now i i'm sure he probably said that just you know you're not going to say it'll happen zero percent of the time because it's not his code he's not the one who created this but at the same time can you imagine can you just freaking imagine hacking your nintendo switch getting someone else's software and through normal usage of it not even trying to get any games or anything like that just doing homebrew stuff all of a sudden that you end up bricking your system because of DRM they put into their own software. Again, the question remains uh, that I brought up earlier in the hypothetical, but I bring it now. Who do you think you are? Seriously, who do you think you are? You are a hacker who, by the way, I'm not putting you down for being a hacker. I'm just a YouTuber. I'm, who am I to put you down for being a Who is anyone really to put you down for being a hacker, right? I'm not putting you down for being a hacker. It's just the idea that, you know, you, you're not... This isn't legit. This is this isn't legit. And if you're thinking to be Matt, you're you're overreacting here. They don't. They're not claiming to be legit. They haven't used any like words or terms. Like they're just they're doing this, and it might be wrong. But why are you acting as if they think that they're legit or they think that they're rivaling Nintendo or something like that? Well, let me tell you exactly what uh, someone from their from their group said to The Verge. I want to make sure to find it right here. Whenever someone is running our program, they can be assured that they are running a safe and well-tested product. You might call me out for nitpicking here, guys. Product? Really? Product? You're not selling anything. But anyway, moving forward, we cannot guarantee equal functionality and performance when any changes are made and therefore do not support any unauthorized uh, modifications. Unauthorized modifications. Unauthorized modifications did you guys know it's an old uh it's an old speech and debate thing or really not even speech and debate it's just english thing in general when you say things over and over again it's for emphasis emphasis they say emphasis unauthorized 
I can't even pronounce it. I didn't pronounce it right the first. Unauthor- unauthorized modifications. You are the unauthorized modification. You, you. It's like me going. It's like, it's like me going. I can't believe what uh, these YouTubers are doing on this platform. I am a YouTuber. Uh, I know in context, it's still me talking about other YouTubers. Let's say, but like, still, imagine if I was like, I can't believe what all YouTubers are doing. It all YouTubers are terrible. All of this, you know, I'm one of the YouTubers. Unauthorized modifications. You are the unauthorized modification. But you know what? Again, you probably, you guys are like, no, Matt, you're really overreacting. Stop it. Don't be, don't be such an idiot, right? Okay, okay. Maybe, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me. I'm going to move on to something else that they said. Uh, something that they said is actually uh, not, it's bad, but it's not bad. Like, oh, you think you're legit. Uh, we can, we can detect, this is a quote from them. We can detect malicious tampering with 100% accuracy and have a harmless cat and mouse game between aspiring hackers and competing teams that, uh, parentheses amongst other things, uh, out of parentheses, simply puts a reversible quote unquote, uh, well, well in brackets password on the system. And then they went on to say, someone would have to purposefully bypass lots of layers of integrity checking put in place to trigger this condition. This is not something that can happen in regular usage ever. So claiming that, hey, listen, you know, I can't do, if I hacked my Switch that I don't have, so I'd be hacking an imaginary Switch. If I hacked a Switch, I couldn't just, you know, get this error and brick the console. So it's only, the only people that are going to get bricked in this case are people that are going out of their way to try and, like, other hackers. And look, thinking that it's a cat and mouse game, look, I I get that you want to mess with other hackers. That's on their level. That's fine, I guess. I have no problem. That's the thing, by the way. I have no problem if they put in, oh, if you want to circumvent our software, then guess what? You have to, you might get your console bricked, fellow hacker. If that was the case, then I wouldn't have a problem if they didn't put up a, a wall and say that you have to pay, by the way, I haven't mentioned the price yet, $35 to access, even if it was $5, it would still be a problem, but $35 to access the uh, the other parts of the Switch or the other parts of the program that allow you to play, um, you know, downloaded or ripped Switch games or whatever you want to call them, Switch games. Um, yeah, so you have to pay $35 to do this. Again, who do you think you are? But you know what? You know what? You know what? Let's keep going. Because, because again, you might be thinking, well, I mean, it's just for other hackers, so it's not a big deal, right? Here's the thing. They wrote, we do not, or rather they said, uh, and, you know, The Verge wrote, we do not, quote, quote, unquote, brick any consoles ever. And we do implement inconveniences to safeguard anti-tampering of our boot file to remain at a competitive advantage. Oh, competitive advantage? Oh, isn't that great? It would simply be bad business to intentionally harm a user's console. Bad business. Bad business. What kind of business are you? I'm sorry, I was under the impression that businesses don't actually hack other businesses' fucking consoles to then play. Can you fucking imagine if I was like, I run a reputable business, I hack PlayStation 4s and then tell people that they have to pay me if they want to play PlayStation 4 games on my PlayStation 4. Other than that, they can do anything they want to with the free version, but uh, no, you have to pay for the paid version. By the way, I'm not with Sony, but uh, but, but but you know what, you have to pay me regardless. Who the heck? This isn't like paying someone to modify your... And even that is a little awkward because, I mean, to be fair, you can do it yourself. But it's not like you're paying someone just for the ability to modify your um, your NES Classic, your Super NES class, Classic as a service, necessarily. Like, oh, send it to me modded. Um, it gets bad if you're saying, you know, I'll pay you to not just mod it, but also dump 700 games on it or something like that. To me, that's a bit of an issue. But still... It isn't, it isn't about the idea of doing it as a service. It's the idea that, oh, I'll give you a little bit of it for free, but if you want more, you have to pay me to be able to, uh, to be able to unlock those features. That's the word I'm looking for, unlock the features. Thank, I finally found it halfway through this rant. Uh, unlock the features of the actual software. What? <laughs> what? I'm laughing. Because it's just, it infuriates me. 
<laughs> because like I'm, I'm getting I'm getting happy angry. You know, I'm sure you guys know the kind of angry. I'm just it, it, it's insanity that a, a group would sit here and act like they're official and they're legit and like Nintendo can't come in there and and lock up them for so long that if they have kids that they've just if they just had kids they'd be seeing them going off to college once they're out of jail are you really are you really doing this right now like really like okay and here's another thing too by the way some of you probably like matt uh i side with them i don't care what you have to say i think they are well within their right to do this even putting the legal even me putting the legal parts aside for this um let me explain why this is bad for the entire community as a whole. Because here's the thing. Uh, for years, yes, companies have, of course, tried to make sure that people can't modify their consoles. And they've done, you know, X, Y, and Z to try to make sure that they would be stopped. It is when companies start charging money for shit is when other companies start coming in and going, Oh, oh, we have to shut this shit down. That is when things start to hit the fan. So when it starts off with, oh, you know, I'm going to mod uh, my Xbox, right? It doesn't matter what Xbox you're on. I'm going to mod my Xbox. It is when, like, at first, it's, of course, you're going to have, you know, Microsoft go, oh, you can't go online or, oh, you're going to be banned from this and be banned from this. And, and again, they have, they're well within their right to do that as well. So, of course, that's going to happen right off the bat. But it's not like the everything's going to be shut down like, oh, we're going to have to go after, you know, we're going to have to go after websites. We're going to have to go after you know, people's lives, bringing them to jail, bringing them into court until you have situations where companies start trying to actually make money off of this. Not your individual, right? Because here's the thing, right? I'm not going to blame an individual who's modding, especially, by the way, retro consoles, uh, who's modding retro consoles, you know, just to ch and selling them on the side, right? I'm not going to blame that person, whoever it is. Uh, the same way that I'm not blaming, if you guys have you know, seen some of my other rants, if you're not new here, uh, Joe Repro, right? I'm not talking negatively about Joe Repro sitting somewhere, helping you out, uh, doing you a solid of putting an English translation on a brand new board, right? I'm not putting down Joe Repro. I'm putting down co people who think they're companies, not even just one person, like a group who thinks they're a company trying to get together and make like, you know, uh, thousands of dollars via runs of different like cartridges or something like that. That's when I start to have a problem when, when someone goes, you know, I made a thousand of these and uh, I'm going to charge, you know, $120 each because there's a box and manual included. It's like, okay, that's nice, but you don't own the, the you know, the rights to it in the U.S. Even if it's an older game, you don't own the rights to it in the U.S. And in this case, this isn't even something that's old and dead yet. If this was happening... Even though I would still have a problem with it, if this was happening 10, 20 years from now, as the Switch was dying down, and we were seeing whatever, you know, Nintendo had up their sleeve next, maybe the Switch U, whatever Nintendo had up their sleeve next, uh, it would be like a Switch, but with two screens. And so, um, you know, whatever that is, right? Then I'd be like, well, it's still wrong, but at least it's towards the end of its life cycle. No, this the Switch it feels like it just came out. I mean, two years, yeah, but still, it basically just came out. It's fresh in its life cycle. And you have this group of people that are like, you know what we're going to do? We're going to make some money off this. We're going to do something that technically anyone should be able to do because it's not, you can't, you can't TM uh, hacking software. So no, I don't think, getting back to the actual, uh, the actual topic itself, the actual uh, title of the video, no. I don't think they should be able to do this, or if they want to do stuff like this, and again, just for a, a nice little cat and mouse game like they claimed, I don't think that's wrong, right? If you want to mess with other fellow hackers, have at it. That's great. It's trying to say to normal users, by the way, you have to pay us $35. Then it's not about the hackers anymore. It's about the fact that you're trying to make money off of something that you have no right to make money off of. This isn't an emulator. If this was an emulator, then you know what? 
kind of, yeah, I have no problem with them making money off of it. If it's 100% theirs, no Nintendo assets with the emulator. Um, like, I have no problem if someone says, hey, let's pay the guys or gals. I have no idea. Or just people in general. I have no idea who uh, worked on it. I should know some usernames here or there. I don't know them personally. Uh, the people that worked on the Super Nintendo emulator right? If you want to pay them money because they made the emulator from what I've heard from scratch, so they didn't use any BIOS or BIOSes or anything like that, go, go. That's great, right? I have no problem with that um, because that's different. That's a, a, something that's completely theirs that they made that can play Super Nintendo games, but it can also play Super Nintendo homebrew games as well. So it's not just about it being Super Nintendo exactly, right? Uh, I have no problem with that. But that's something that's vastly different than this situation, where this should be open to everyone, free of charge, and you want to mess with hackers? Mess with hackers. But to actually charge them. I mean, the gall. And not even just the gall, too. Just, again, it reflects poorly on the community, and then Nintendo's looking at everyone going, great. So I guess all of them are the enemy, and that's not the truth at all. There are some great hackers in the community who wouldn't think of doing some scummy garbage like this. Now, let's end this on a very bad note, but also I think kind of funny. Uh, really depends on your... It's funny not when it actually is happening to any any underage fans, but it's funny just to see the picture of it out of context. And when you guys look at the article, you know what I mean. Um, but apparently, because people can um, mod a bunch of other stuff in the Switch, they can also mod their profile avatars. So being able to mod that means that they can mod the avatar with any picture they'd like. So um, I do not have Mario Odyssey. Some of my cousins do. Um, and I have... I've seen them play it a little bit but i have no idea what you can do in it functionality things like that but apparently at one point you can actually uh, make a balloon uh, is that what it was you can make a balloon and then uh, another person can see the balloon like see your avatar's picture in the balloon when i met you guys can probably see where this is going and how it can go horribly horribly wrong uh so somebody's avatar was a pornographic image which is a big no-no don't do that. Seriously, this isn't like a funny disclaimer. Don't do that. There's kids online. Don't be a fucking asshole. But seeing this happen out of context, hoping this happened to another user who um, is cool with porn and who's an adult, um, you just see Mario looking at this balloon like, Brother, what is this? And Luigi's like, what is it, bro? Oh, shit. Uh, Luigi's not in the picture, but I just imagined, just off camera, just Mario, what the fuck? I don't know, what the come to Mushroom Kingdom? Uh, like, to me, that makes me laugh hysterically. But, and I, hopefully in a weird way it's on a lighter note, uh, but in some ways, of course, that's also really problematic, and that's why people are getting banned online for having switches. Sorry, guys, you do shit like this, you're gonna get banned. Uh, and I know it's like, but why are they banning everybody? Because, again, people who do stuff like this give us a bad name, give any, you know, give Switch users a bad name in general, and all of a sudden Nintendo's like, well, I guess we have to ban all of you. We can't just ban some of you until you do something wrong like this. That's terrible. We have, you know, we have um, stockholders to appease. So they ban all of you. And in the same thing, that's why I'm thinking that the same thing might actually happen here with hacking, right? You think hacking is all fun and games. You think, ah, I'm going to charge money because, what for what reason what why do you why do you deserve to earn a living off of actually sitting around circumventing other people's hardware and then because the thing too by the way i would like to mention if they were charging for the whole shebang ah uh, i don't know i still feel like it's wrong to charge that's why charging was a little off i was like i don't know what to do about charging but it's not about just the charging it's about the drm and the charging, and only charging for the Switch games as if it's like, oh, it's a higher tier because it's a business, right? No, you're not running a business. Nint like, I don't, I, I just don't understand what they think is going to happen. Is this like a hacker movie? Do they think that, you know, that that's what's going to happen? It's a hacker movie. And what's going to happen is Nintendo's going to go, whoa, these are some cool hackers. We got to get you guys on board. No, Nintendo's going to go, that's them, officer. And the judge is going to go, ah, all right then, 20 years it is. I don't know how long they would actually charge them for, but it's copyright infringement. In some cases, companies actually, and judges take copyright infringement even more seriously than murder, which is very sad. But still, it's, it's just the truth. It's like, what do you guys, what is your end game? Do you think your end game is, oh, Nintendo's gonna hire us? No, 
It isn't. I'm not saying that Nintendo or other companies haven't worked with hackers before. Hell, I love when uh, the anime fandom and the manga fandom brings in people who used to be uh, anime trans uh, fan translators, you know, fan groups, uh, scanlators, bring them in to do legit stuff, and now they've been converted to doing only legit stuff, and that's beautiful, right? It's a beautiful thing. But there's a big difference between, okay, I know people are going to hit me with the Crunchyroll thing immediately, right? Crunchyroll started off hosting illegal anime uh, fan subs. Oh no, but if I remember correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below, please. If I remember correctly, they weren't selling them. They weren't doing different tiers of, oh, pay us to get better bandwidth or something like that. And if they were, then of course that's a huge issue and that's a problem. But at the same time, they, they weren't doing that, so they were just hosting them kind of like YouTube did in the early days. And then when YouTube was like, nah, then they took them off because of advertisers. Looking in, in this case, of course we have um, you know Crunchyroll, again, becoming legit. Now Crunchyroll is a legit anime streaming website, and that's great. You can't, but the thing is, you can't uh, think, oh, we're going to go legit after all this. You can. I'm not saying you can't turn your lives around. I'm just saying that you can't sit back and go, we're going to charge people $35 a pop. We're going to get that money and Nintendo isn't going to do anything to us. Nintendo isn't just some small indie developer in the US or in Japan. They're worldwide, guys. They're going to get you. And I don't even want them to get you necessarily. Like, I, I don't want you guys to be in jail for years, right? It's just... You can't sit here and try to charge for this like it's a goddamn streaming service. You're not Netflix. You're not Crunchyroll. You're not Funimation now. You're not Verve. You're a couple guys or just people. You're a couple peeps who wanted to do something cool, I think, in the beginning. And now all of a sudden you're like, but we could make a profit. You, you can't. You just can't. I'm sorry. Just some things in life you can't make a profit out of. This isn't like fan art or something like that. You know, this isn't you getting commission requests to do, you know, uh, lewd fan art or just normal fan art. Actually, I don't know why I went lewd immediately. Uh, but the point is, is that that's not what this is. You're sitting here doing something and I really doubt that Nintendo is going to let this slide. So good luck. Um... Both to anyone who's actually paid for this, because guess what? It's not going to matter because Nintendo's going to end up shutting this down and then your paid subscription, whatever you want to call it, will be ruined because there won't be, the DRM will still be there and you won't be able to access it. Or, or, and good luck to you guys that are actually trying to sell this. So this group is actually trying to sell this. And I say good luck not in selling this, just good luck. Uh, hopefully Nintendo doesn't shut you guys down too hard. Hopefully you can still hack afterwards. Um... I just, you just get, you guys gotta stop with bullshit. Like, what, again, just what is this? Like, I think that's just the theme. I know the topic is the topic. The theme is stop with the bullshit. Like, it's just stop. <sighs> well, got that off my chest. Anyway, uh, what I do want to hear is your thoughts below. Any of you, including people, I guess, from the hacking group, if you, if you, if you want to send your representative here in my comment section, that's cool too, I guess. Um, anyway, I want to thank you all so much for listening in, so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe if you liked the video. And if you didn't like the video, you can still like and subscribe. Either way, it doesn't stop you from liking or subscribing. You can hate watch everything I do. That's cool, too. Um, I'm going to try to be less mad during my next Matt rants because I like to be mad during these Matt rants. I don't like to seem like I'm just getting all angry and flustered and frustrated. I like to do some happy Matt rants every once in a while. I like to do those. So, uh, yeah. So, but again, thank you all so much for watching. Please come comment below talk to me about your switch stories uh talk to me about if you think you should be able to hack your switch if you think you want to hack your switch if you think hacking your switch would be terrible and if you think that uh the company or you know a company oh god now i'm getting now i'm getting uh brought in by the brainwashing no if you think that this uh, hacker group should actually be able to do this or if you think that they went too far right or maybe they didn't go far enough i don't know they should charge for everything all right, guys. So anyway, that about wraps this up. Love you all. Take care and tune in next time for another episode of Matt Rants. Okay, guys. So see ya.